Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE, exclusive coverage of Puerto Rico, covering Blockchain Unbound's global conference where token economics meets the real world, global society, blockchain, decentralized applications, and of course, cryptocurrency all kind of coming together. You got investors, you got developers, you got billionaires and millionaires, and you got the capital markets all rolled up into one. My next guest is Andrew Prell, founder and CEO of Convergence, uh, entrepreneur, visionary, experienced entrepreneur. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much for having so me. So you're doing some really radical thing. I'm radical progressive. I mean, radical sounds like radical, but it's awesome things. You're reimagining gaming. Correct. Got a great team of people who have, who have seen the movie before, literally seen the entertainment side of gaming, the, the, the pro gaming side to the tactical gaming side. Take a minute to explain what you guys are doing. That's super fascinating. How it works in this new era. So we're reimagining the entire game space. When I say that, I'm talking the consumer side that's cell phones all the way through consoles and PCs out to the out-of-home entertainment side, which is arcades, location-based entertainment, and full-blown theme parks, and marrying them all together with one backbone platform that allows all of the devices to interact with each other in the same game space. So you can be in a $300,000 simulator at Disneyland, working with guys in the cell on cell phones against guys on their, in their um, head-mounted displays. Any of that, they all work together in one so game space. So basically the world is the device. Every device yes. in the on the network, IP connection or right. mobile is a player, console, screen, right. We're, we're, and you're connecting them all together. Right, we're giving... Hence convergence. Right, we're giving <laughs> every device in the ecosystem its proper place and its proper prestige. Because if you've got a $5,000 gaming rig, you don't think a guy with an $800 cell phone should be at the exact same level, but maybe 10 of the cell phones could be an equal match to you. All right, take me through a use case of how you're going to converge this all together. Obviously, you talk to some purists out there. I got a 4K monitor. I don't want the cell phone guy coming in here. He's got lag. I got you know, all kinds of gaming issues. No, Does that go oh, away? How does it all work? Well, what we're having to do is contextual-based interfaces, meaning that your roles and responsibilities in the game space is dependent on the devices that you bring in. Because like virtual reality is not just the head mount display, it's all yeah. the new gear coming out with the tactile feedback, the body suits, the gloves, the, the boots, the, the yeah. tre treadmills, all of that. So all of that you can, you have to, your roles and responsibilities in each game space is dependent on the device that you enter with. So I was at Sundance this year and I had a theme, I did a panel that I uh, put together called The New Creative. And if you look at all the new artists out there, they want to break down the elite gatekeepers, right? I mean, the VR and augmented reality, virtual reality and augmented reality world is colliding with film, mm -hmm. filmmakers. You got YouTubers out there with a million, 10 million subscribers, built-in audiences. This new technology coming out. So a lot of people are bringing storytelling, filmmaking, and it's just really in the early stages right now. You can't, you just see you know, people love characters, but you start to see the new kind of format. So this, does this play into your, um, your world? Because I can imagine that if you're thinking to be disruptive in the way you're thinking is, new games are going to emerge. So it's not thinking about the old games, thinking about potentially new games. Correct. How do you view that? I mean, is that something that you see? What's your reaction to that trend of this new, you know, multifaceted VR, AR, you know? We see that everybody is going to get to play together across every device. We're, the developers are going to get rewarded for creating content. People are going to be rewarded for creating things inside of the games. And the players are going to get rewarded for doing all the top things and getting to the top levels of all the games. And we're going to reward them through our cryptocurrency. All right, so I need you to get your opinion on this. We're in Puerto Rico, obviously, the, the, this world's going to another level. Um, Brock Pierce, his community, the blockchain community, they're coming to Puerto Rico, tax incentives, the government's here opening up their arms. Um, but you're starting to see it go to the next level. In these early industries, you got the entrepreneurs and the promoters. Mm -hmm. and the promoters promote the entrepreneurs, and there's a lot of love going back and forth, but then they hit that threshold. The capital markets come in. You know, you start to see the opportunities with the money start flowing in. It's kind of happening now. So it's going to the next level. In your opinion, token economics, now that there's so much money flowing in, now that people see that blockchain's legit, now that people see that this is actually a new model, not everybody, but you know, majority of the people in the industry are all ready to nod on their heads. Okay, blockchain's got some potential. Token economics is a legit thing. It's disrupting capital structures. It's disrupting funding. How is it disrupting the gaming business? 
Can you share well, your uh, people, opinion on that? Yeah, people don't understand the overall impact. We didn't overall understand the overall impact. A lot of the investors coming in still don't fully understand the overall impact. And I was in a discussion the other day, I'd wrote, written some articles in Medium about token economics and about the virtuous circle of a token-based investment fund, meaning everything that it invests, all the fees, everything coming out of it is all based on a token inside of an ecosystem. We're about to head to GDC, Game Developers Conference. Just like Kevin Backus did for the Xbox, we're going out there to license and buy up all the content that we can through our tokens. Now the cool thing here, the thing that just makes the investment, the cash funds dead, is a dollar bill cannot change in value other than go down over time slightly. So we just say the dollar bill doesn't change in value. If I was Kevin Backus back when the Xbox was coming out and I went and invested a million dollars in a uh, hundred companies in crypto, mm -hmm. say the Xbox is crypto, mm -hmm. and you can only get to those games through the token, which is what we're doing, and I found Halo, which I oh, know 100 million people bought the Xbox just because of Halo, then what that does for a cash fund is everybody pats each other on the back because you've got one game that's going to exit and that's kind of cool, but that's it. Doesn't affect the rest of the economy other than a nice network yeah. effect. Uh, Halo gets 100 million users, the next guy might get 5 million of those or yeah. 10 million of those. But that's a nice small impact. When you do it with crypto and you start out with a penny token, that you put in a million into a million dollars into a hundred companies, and you find that halo, and it explodes. Your penny might go, their penny token might go to ten cents. So what you just did was you just ten x what you invested in it's the halo. It's a futures contract on well, gaming. Well, kind of. I'm not going to talk to that point. I'm going <laughs> to just talk about this example. Yeah. yeah. Is you 10x, you went from a million to ten million into halo, but you also did 10x every single investment you just did and you 10x every person in that ecosystem that has, that's involved in it, that's getting paid in it, you know, your, yeah. your suppliers, your, your publishers, your media, everyone everybody. Everyone gets paid. Everybody get 10 x because you found Halo. Yeah. So that makes this whole ubiquitous ecosystem all um, involved with everybody else, meaning yeah. I get rewarded if you get rewarded. So everybody helps that everybody else. That is exactly else. the model of token exactly. economics. It explodes because of that. Well, it's so powerful. Well, this is interesting. The inefficiencies of the process mm -hmm. that you pointed out the old way is eliminated by the new model. Hence, the people who pick up the game are the participants who shorten that right. efficiencies. I had a guy the other day <laughs> ask me, it's like, well, we're, you're not asking for enough money with your ICO because you've got to go invest in all these companies. And I was like, you don't understand token economics. All I have to do is unlock the power of my token and invest with that, and I've already proven, we back in 2015, yeah, we yeah. proved that all the game companies or a lot of the game developers would take yeah. our token without it even having Well, I mean, you haven't market. even gone to a whole nother dimension that you don't even have to go to now, but in the future is the role of consensus in these communities really also do the filtering 100%. at many levels. 100%. You look at what Activision got their ass handed to them when they, you go to the Reddit <laughs> threads, all you gotta do is look at the Reddit threads. <laughs> you know, the whole gaming thing is no one wants to see games go corporate. Oh, exactly. Right, because they have to force a business model. 100%. This is a huge issue. People oh, exactly. are losing their shirts. Oh, great creative studio, they sold out. Game's over. The, the audience flocks away. Why? Because they have no incentive. What we're doing, we you actually, agree? Well, I agree 100%, but there's a lot of professional investors that don't. So we broke up the, um, some of our funds that we're investing into all these startups. We broke it up into 10 funds and we're going to turn it into a game. Because we're going to give one of the funds purely to our token holders and do a consensus model and let them vote on what they think we should, what should be on yeah. our, in our network. And they're going to go up against nine other um, investors in, to see, you know, I threw down the gauntlet, whoever, whoever gets best wins the So extra are you bonuses. raising money now or have you raised the token sale already? Um, we're closing out our private pre-sale and because of Blockchain Unbound, I doubt we'll actually hit the open market with the ICO, so people will have to go to our developers that we invest in and get the tokens through them somehow. So you've had good, good success here, huh? <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, it's been Blockchain awesome. Unbound been a good success for you? Oh yeah, uh, Brock Pierce is, is on board, has been pushing behind us just uh, since, since um, Cayman. Uh, him and Crystal both you know, fully good. supported us and we're having What's awesome What's your advice to people out success. there uh, scratching their heads? Andrew, give me the 101 on token economics. What's the bottom line? What do I need to know about? Where do I get started? What do what, I do? Once you get your token actually say authenticated, realized, everything's transparent, and it gets on that secondary market, 
it's better to use that to invest in anything you need to invest in. Get everybody incentivized around your token, all your employees, all your vendors, everybody incentivized around that token. It's a thousand percent more powerful than a dollar because a dollar doesn't go up in value and your token, your token can go up and down, but it tends, trends up and as soon as you find just one spark that blows up everybody, all boats rise equally. It's awesome. All right, Andrew Prell, CEO, Reimagining Gaming. Token economics is a disruptive force. It's math involved. Every company will need a chief economic officer. That'll be a new title. We'll be certainly seeing that out. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. I'm John Furrier, you're watching theCUBE. Exclusive coverage in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound, part of our two-day wall-to-wall coverage. Thanks for watching, we'll be back with more after this short break. Thank you.